In 1980, Namco came out with an arcade game that changed the way developers approached making games. This game was Puckman, or Pac-Man for international releases. The game is simple. Move the circular puck missing a pizza slice around the maze while collecting all the dots. Meanwhile, you also have to avoid a quartet of ghosts named Blinky, Pinky, Inky, and Clyde. By collecting the power pellets in the four corners of the map, you can turn the tables on the ghosts and need them for points. That's the basis of Pac-Man. It's a simple game that was then cloned time after time because of its roaring success. Scarfman was one of those ripoffs that came out for the TRS-80 computer. Right away you'd expect some aspect of seeing a man in a scarf, but instead you just control a C-shaped object that roams around dodging oddly shaped ghosts. Scarfman upped the ante by having five ghosts moving around the map and five power pills to collect. The TRS-80 was without color, so the only way to tell when you could actually devour ghosts is from the bright white flash after you pass over a power pellet. The ZX Spectrum had another clone by the name of Hungry Horus. The Horus series actually included multiple games, including Horus Goes Skiing, which is a Frogger ripoff. In Hungry Horus, the goal is to lead Horus through the park while he collects snacks and avoids park rangers. After collecting everything, you can then move on to other maps that advance in difficulty and add more park rangers. Taxman was a game for the Apple II published by HAL Labs in 1981. It's a pretty obscene ripoff, but at least they changed the name of the ghosts to Gunner, Runner, Punner, and Sheila. The ghosts are also always shifty-eyed for some reason. Due to its drastic similarity to Pac-Man, Atari eventually acquired the rights to Taxman and then made their own Apple II port of the game. Devil World was Shigeru Miyamoto's first console-only game, and although it played a lot like Pac-Man, it added several unique elements. Playing as Tamagon the Dragon, you once again patrol a maze collecting dots. This time, there are crosses sprinkled throughout that give Tamagon the ability to spit fire at the one-eyed enemies. On top of that, the demon at the top of the maze controls which direction the screen moves. In the second maze, Tamagon has to collect four Bibles and deliver them to the seal in the middle. Due to its obvious religious nature, the game never saw the light of day in North America. On top of all these games, there's also Cat Chum, Snack Attack, Snapper, Jawbreaker, and an endless list of games that mimic Pac-Man. But none of these games could ascend their ghost-eating main character to the 3D realm like Pac-Man could.